Hello, listeners. Welcome to Marie Lives the Horror. This is episode 33 of the series of True Paranormal Ghost Stories. In tonight's episode, a strange antique doll plays paranormal games with a family. A young couple gets a ghostly reality check in a cemetery. And a strange webcam encounter reveals a paranormal entity inside of a home. Tonight's episode is presented in collaboration with fellow horror narrator, Lady Spookeria. Be sure to stop by her amazing channel and check out her content. Our Lady Spook will be watching watching you. A link to her channel will be down in the description below. So without further ado, step Step into into my my horror horror chamber chamber. as As we we live live the horror horror together. together. I'm going to preface this post by saying that paranormal experiences are not abnormal to me. I've seen ghosts many times over my life, and my mum claims to have seen me playing with them as a child. My mum was a psychic medium, so I spent a good deal of my childhood around this stuff, but those experiences are for another post. This little blurb is just to assure you that I've had experience with the paranormal before, and that what I experienced I consider to be abnormal generally as most of my exposures up until now have been positive or at least neutral. This was a few years ago in my very early 20s. I'm in my mid to late 20s now. I hadn't had any paranormal experiences since a little while after my mum died when I was a teenager. I was starting to think the things I had experienced didn't happen at all. General denial. One night on a whim while driving around a suburb near my house, I managed to convince my boyfriend to come with me to the local cemetery. I was going through a bit of an edgy phase and thought going to a cemetery at night would be cool. This is a cemetery in a big city and it is extremely large. I don't believe in ghosts hanging around in a cemetery so I thought it would be fine. I believe that ghosts usually hung around places they died or places they had unfinished business and it was not likely they'd be hanging around a graveyard. It was sometime in October but not Halloween. We got to the cemetery around 11.30 p.m. and screwed around in the car for a bit before getting out, before getting out sometime after 12 a.m. We had our phones with us and were using them as torches. We hopped the fence to the cemetery and started to look at all the graves, pointing out the most interesting ones and kind of just screwing around. The place was completely deserted as cemeteries tend to be at 12 a.m. We walked further and further in and entered a part of the cemetery where the graves were quite a bit larger and much older. By now it had likely been around half an hour. As we were walking down the path my boyfriend commented that there was a strange smell lingering around. As we were walking around the path my boyfriend commented there was a strange smell lingering around. Which was extremely weird as my boyfriend cannot smell at all. He lost his smell due to a bunch of infections and other problems with his ears and sinuses as a child. I don't know 100% of the details of the problems though. I couldn't smell anything and I have an above normal sense of smell so we both shrugged the experience off. I was looking at one of the graves sometime later when my boyfriend shook my shoulder and pointed to one of the largest graves a few meters into the distance. I'm terrible at knowing where people are pointing but this time I spotted it right away. It was a little girl. I guess around 11 or 12 years old. She had very dark brown or black hair that looked well cared for and quite long. She was sitting on top of the grave with her legs dangling over the edge. At first I saw her wearing a lacy white dress like a nightgown a rich girl would wear. It looked old but I'm no expert so I couldn't tell you how old. Maybe 1900s? But I looked away to look at my boyfriend when I looked back again she was wearing a different dress. All I remember is that it was red because at this point I was super scared. Something about the whole situation felt wrong to me. 
I felt extremely fearful and due to the fact ghosts were very normal to me, this was extremely unusual. I had never felt unsafe seeing a ghost before. It was around this time I noticed that the cemetery was eerily quiet. No sounds of bats, and there were a lot of fruit bats in that area, or any other animals, and the air felt stale and stagnant. We just stood and stared at the little girl for what felt like an eternity, weirdly transfixed, and then we both ran for it, up the path, full speed. I turned for a second to see if she was still there, and she was gone completely. It made me run faster, honestly, and the whole run out we were both dead silent. When we were back at our car, we sat there for ages trying to work out what we just saw, trying to rationalize it, but as we both had paranormal experiences before, we knew it had to be a ghost. For a few months afterwards, I continuously felt like I was being watched and had frequent nightmares about seeing a little girl in our apartment. I always felt uneasy. We eventually moved around 30 minutes away and the feelings and dreams stopped. I've since tried to research the ghost, but haven't turned anything up. Though, there is a local ghost tour at the cemetery, and maybe the guide might know something. Ever since then, my paranormal experiences have been getting more frequent, and have been getting more unsettling and disturbing. My boyfriend has been experiencing things more frequently as well. I may write up another post soon about my more recent experiences if anyone is interested. Hello, my name is Brandon, and I thought I would share my most terrifying experience on here. Sorry, it's kind of long. So I'll just start with some history on the doll. I was told this by the previous owner. She was bought in Monroe, Connecticut, about 30-ish minutes away from the Warren's Occult Museum at a second-hand store. The owner who bought it felt something was wrong with it and would often wake up with scratches and have nightmares every night. So. She gave it to a friend to sell it on eBay, the man I purchased it from. The man selling it had a few stories, like one for instance, where he had family coming over, so he hides the doll in an upstairs closet, so his niece didn't see it. The family slept downstairs, and the niece woke up at 3 a.m. crying from a nightmare, and she described the doll he had upstairs, but she never went upstairs and never seen the doll in person. She didn't even know it was there. So after that experience, he wanted to sell the doll, but didn't feel safe with it, so he put it in a storage unit. The company he was storing it in called him asking for him to come and open the unit for them to prove there was no animal in it as the security guard heard banging and movement in the storage locker at night. I am very interested in the paranormal, so I have a collection of Ouija boards, a haunted music box, and an exorcism kit from the 70s. I decided to purchase this doll. And when it first arrived, the second I took it out of the box, all four of my dogs started growling very, very aggressively and moving backwards away from the doll. To clarify, my dogs love everyone. If a stranger broke into my house to rob us, they would greet him with wagging tails and licks. So this was very odd for them. As I stated earlier, I have an exorcism kit. With this kit, there is a cross that is almost locked in place with two pieces of metal. And around 30 minutes after removing the doll from the box, I heard a noise from upstairs. 
I went upstairs to investigate. It was the cross. The cross had been removed from the kit and fallen off my shelf and onto the floor. I was the only one home, and all the dogs were downstairs with me, and my room door was closed. Ever since this experience, my family has been scared of the doll. So I put the doll back into the box and sealed it with salt and put it in the garage of my old house. I moved out with my girlfriend and my family still lives there. I unfortunately forgot about it as I was packing in a hurry. I forgot to get stuff in the garage. After I moved, my mother moved into her now ex-boyfriend's house. Let's call him Logan and she put the doll in a shed. Not every night, but a lot of times throughout the week. They would look outside late at night, and the door to the shed would be open. One time when Logan went outside to close the door, he heard something move in the shed. So he went inside to check what the noise was. When he was inside, He couldn't find anything that could have made the noise, but he said he felt uncomfortable and cold, so he quickly went to leave and just as he did, four truck tires that were sitting on a shelf fell right on top of where he was just standing. Yes, this could have been a coincidence, but it felt like it wasn't, especially since the doll was also sitting on that shelf. After my mother broke up with Logan, she moved into an apartment and she put the doll in a closet. She has told me nothing has really happened since then, but when she is alone, she hears footsteps and knocks. And the last few nights, she has been waking up around 3 a.m., hearing noises in her room, but can never see or find anything. I will be visiting in January and will be bringing the doll back home with me when I leave. This is pretty long, but worth the read. A few years ago, I was helping my then boyfriend's mum, mother-in-law, set up a webcam so she could see her grandchildren, who lived pretty far away. I set it up physically for her, then went home to help her walk through how it would work on the phone, so she could see me on the cam. We had it working, we were just chatting when she got quiet for a sec, then asked, Did boyfriend get off work early? Me, no, he's still at work. Mother-in-law, then who is that standing behind you? Me, turning around. There is no one there. I'm here alone. She's getting upset because she swears she can see someone, and it must either be lying to her or trying to trick her. So I swing my arms around to the side and behind me to show her. She still says she sees the legs and lower torso of a man, and she's kind of pissed at this point and just turns off her cam. The next day, boyfriend is home and I decide to go to mother-in-law's house and talk to her and explained that I really was alone. And maybe there was something wonky about the cam. We turn on the cam and the boyfriend is on ours to talk to us and make sure there is nothing weird on our end. He's sitting there by himself and after a few minutes, someone walks into the frame. You can see greyish work pants and a grey striped uniform tucked into the pants. Mother-in-law. There he is, I told you. Boyfriend, mum, I promise there is no one here. So I come up with a plan for her to go over to our house and I and father-in-law will stay at her house and we'll prove to her that there is no one there. The man just stays there the whole time, doesn't move. Mother-in-law comes into the frame and sits down right in front of that torso and she looks around and there is no one there. To cut off her trying to say we were still trying to trick her, yes, she's pretty paranoid like that, but a total non-believer. I screenshot the image of the man standing behind her, even though she didn't see anything. She wouldn't use the webcam again, even with someone else. I had been trying to tell people what I've heard and seen things there, 
but no one would believe me. So back when I was younger, I lived in an older house, and this was when I was like four and still would crawl into my parents' bed at night if I've seen weird figures or shadows in my room. One night, I was laying in bed and I wake up out of a deep sleep, and I see a black shadow in my doorway in the shape of a figure. As soon as I notice it, it charges at me, and I cannot move, but I can feel my energy just get lifted out of my body. It was to the point where I can vividly remember looking down at my body. Only when I started screaming and my parents came in did everything return to normal. A few nights ago, I was at my girlfriend's and she just moved into a really nice modern new house. And we were both going camping that night for a PS5 and we decided to drink a little beforehand. Nowhere near enough to even be tipsy. As we are talking on the couch, she asked me to stop and look at the window above her front door, which has a reflection to the steps and the hallway. And she asked me if I see a figure standing at the top of the stairs, and I immediately look up there, and without hesitation, right at the foot of the stairs is a figure. Ever since she had moved in back in October, she has seen and heard weird things and seen multiple shadows move in her hallway at night while she sleeps. I have seen them too when I'm awake in bed with her and she's asleep. She just texted me tonight saying that she woke up out of a dead sleep and saw a dark shadow figure in her doorway and as soon as it saw her it charged and she said she could feel the energy being sucked out of her much to the same way i had when i was younger i know this is a long one and i appreciate the time you guys take to read it because i want to know if something is attached to me and now attacking her or if she is experiencing something all on her own any advice would help and if you have any questions please don't be afraid to ask thanks everyone i'm a freshman on my campus and i'm someone who usually keeps to myself and being quiet and considered on the smaller side of the height spectrum i can often be overlooked I didn't make many friends and tried to keep to myself, but all that seemed to shift once I started talking to my building RAs. They were friendly and invited me to some events, which I found myself being intrigued by. When I attended their introduction session, I found out only a few others had attended, and all of them seemed to have been quiet, like me. Eventually, conversation started, and given it was close to 9 o'clock, the topic quickly shifted from the stress of classes to the urban legend that shrouded our building. I found myself listening in and was quickly sucked into the accounts told by one of the sophomores. Apparently, the 11th floor, the last floor in our building, was a hotspot for paranormal happenings. Some claimed that the empty study rooms would let out sudden bangs and noises without any real explanation as to how they occurred. The lights would flicker or blow its fuse at random times in the night. Some recall feeling a heavy weight when entering the boys' dorm halls, but the most chilling out of all of those was the shadow. Figure multiple students had seen peering out from behind the corners of the hallways. When they tried to get close, the lights would flicker and the shadow would disappear. As she finished explaining the legends, she was met with some laughs, as most didn't seem to believe it. A couple of them merely shook their heads, glad that they weren't staying on the 11th floor. As creeped out as I was, I wanted to see if the legends were true, so I decided that after the meeting was over I would take the elevator up to the 11th floor and explore for myself. 
I asked the girl who told the story if she wanted to come with me, and her face paled. No, I'm not brave enough to try to get that thing to follow me. You'll have to go on your own. Sorry. Going down on my own was going to be more daunting, but my curiosity got the best of me. Once the meeting ended, I made my way towards the elevators, pressing the button that'll take me upstairs. I was currently on the 10th floor. As the doors opened, I found it was empty, which made me nervous. This was my last chance to turn back, but I pushed myself anyway. I stepped in and pressed the button for the 11th floor before I would change my mind. The doors slowly closing and separating me from the rest of the gathered group. As it took me up, I began to feel an upset feeling in my stomach, and the elevator felt oddly cold. Once it reached down the 11th floor, the doors creaked open, showing that the floor was vacant of any students. I stepped out and peeked around the lobby, just in case someone had been standing in the halls. Everyone seemed to have already gone into their rooms for the evening, leaving the floor eerily silent. I started to walk towards the boys' dorm hall, where the noises were reported to be heard. As I got further and further down the hall, I could feel this weight on my shoulders, as though something was applying a small amount of weight on them. It was strange, and I felt a chill rush up my spine. I felt like I was being watched or disturbing something. Eventually, I got a bit anxious and began walking faster down the hall, wanting to make my way back to the elevator. As I passed by the empty study rooms, I heard a loud bang echo beside me. My heart began to pound and I sprinted for the elevator, refusing to look back in fear of seeing something following close behind. I kept pressing the call button, feeling the sweat beam on my forehead. Eventually, the doors opened and a woman was waiting on the other side. She noticed how pale I was and asked if I was okay. All I could do was faintly nod before rushing on and reaching for the button on my floor. A male from the dorms nearly stopped me, asking to get on. I let him on and asked what floor he needed. It was the second floor. That was where we got our mail. I pressed the button and refused to look outside the doors. Eventually the doors closed and we began descending down to the second floor. And I felt that heavy feeling slowly lift from me. I sighed in relief, glad it was over. The guy beside me chuckled a bit, noticed how unnerved I was. You alright? You look scared. I nodded again and couldn't say much else. He got off the elevator and waved, but I was too zoned out to notice. I just wanted to go back to my dorm and forget this happened. I went to press the button for the third floor, but just as my finger grazed the button, the eleventh floor button lit up, the door shut and the elevator began to climb back up the tower, and my eyes widened in horror. That heavy feeling returned and it felt like someone was standing right behind me. It was so cold, the temperature dropped at least 10 degrees. It was so cold, the temperature dropped at least 10 degrees. Once the elevator stopped, the doors opened, revealing the empty lobby once more. No one summoned the elevator, which only confirmed my fear. I could feel myself begin to shake, refusing to look behind me as I began to helplessly jam the button for the third floor. The lights began to flicker and I closed my eyes, praying that this was going to stop. The doors slowly closed and I began my descent back to my floor, the feeling of being watched still there. I didn't think I could run as fast as I did. As soon as those doors opened, I ran like my life depended on it. I ran into my dorm, locked the door, and slumped down onto the floor. I no longer could deny that there was something in that building, and I could only hope that it didn't follow me. I didn't sleep well that night, and to this day it still freaks me out. And the worst part is, sometimes I feel like I'm being watched. Except for this time, it's in my dorm. I'm never investigating on my own ever again. This may be a bit lengthy, but we'll see. This is a recollection of my personal experiences and some of my family members. If that isn't allowed, I'll edit them out. During the years of 2009 to 2012, when I was a young teen, we moved into my aunt's old house. For some background, my aunt is married to a pastor and they lived there for some time before us. 
It should be known that her husband performed an exorcism in that very house. We didn't find that out until we moved out, incidentally. Anyways, so we had haunting since day one. Our beds weren't set up yet, so I had slept on an air mattress in our parents' room and my brother on the couch in the living room. My mom noticed that the light had turned on in the closet. Did any of you leave the light on? She'd asked. None of us had, so she turned it off and went to bed. A while later, the light inexplicably turned itself back on. Okay. It could have been faulty wiring or power, but it gets scarier throughout the years. My mom recalled one morning, wide-eyed and pale-faced, an event that happened the night before. She had seen the outline of a man, and he was painting in one of the alcoves in the hallway. When she tried to talk to him, he looked at her, and threw what she described as spiderwebs at her. She then went back to bed without reacting, but she was spooked the day later. I myself have memories of sitting at the computer in the living room. It was adjoined with the kitchen, and being a teen, I loved staying up until the sun would come out, chatting with my friends online. I would frequently feel something play with my hair and would hear the fridge door open out of nowhere. Weirder still, I had sent my friend a message once with nothing but the symbol, quote unquote. Problem is, I was nowhere near the computer when that happened, nor were any family members or pets. We still joke around about that till this day, trying not to be spooked by it. My dad also reported seeing a shadow walking in the house when he was home alone. When he went inside to check, he saw no one, but our Shih Tzu was curled up in the corner shivering. There were a lot of smaller occurrences, like the printer turning itself off and on as well as the computers. Another weird thing is that whenever I would record videos with my cousin on my laptop, the audio would become distorted. We'd suddenly be speaking slower. I chalked it up to being a shitty laptop, but it didn't happen anywhere else. The worst thing in my opinion happened one night. I was sleeping in bed with my mom I loved watching the show Ghost Adventures, and as such, had been watching it before bed. Horrible idea in a haunted house, but I was 13 and dumb. Soon enough, I began to feel spooked and changed the channel to watch George Lopez instead. I turned it on mute and slowly began to drift off. That's when my mom and I heard a nasty, shrill shriek from somewhere close by. We jolted up and my mom, half asleep, asked me why I had left Ghost Adventures on. It was still on George Lopez and very much on mute. We never found the cause for that and my mom claimed she saw a small shadow walking on the floor after. So yeah, Just figured I'd share some of my spookiest experiences. I'll never forget that house. I still dream about it all the time. What freaks me out the most is that when we were moving, I, an idiotic 14-year-old, decided to taunt the thing. I wouldn't doubt if I accidentally caused it to attach itself to me somehow. But the only experiences I still have are the dreams. Hello listeners. Thank you for listening to tonight's episode. 
of true paranormal ghost stories as you live the horror with me. I would like to extend a very special thanks to our special guest, Lady Spookaria, for joining me on this episode. Be sure to show our lady some support and stop by her channel. If you have a true ghost story that you would like for me to narrate in a future episode, please send your story over to my email. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell to keep up with future content. Thanks again for listening, and as always, I am your host, Marie Marie Lives lives the the Horror.